Welcome to a noob's guide to Ikit Claw. This is Ikit Claw. He's a Skaven, who are far less cool than the Skaven. They listen to weird music, wear matching suits, and come with free fedoras. Everyone hates Ikit Claw. Everyone. Every turn will bring you a new person you've never met, just to tell you how much they hate you, just like the internet. See, Ikit here is a bit of a mad scientist, like an evil rat version of Dr. Oppenheimer, and wants nothing more than to create fun toys to glass the surface world in the name of the horned rat. As the head of Clan Scryer, Ikit Claw is a lord guaranteed to reignite the debate on the word nuclear. Mission accomplished indeed. In the Vortex campaign, Ikit starts shoehorned into an already overcrowded Lustria. At this point, it's a knife fight to even find a parking spot down there. I mean, you might as well name it Brooklyn. Instead, you should play the Mortal Empires map, which puts Clan Scryer where they're supposed to be in Skaven Blight. It even has a unique landmark that gives easy access to Clan Rats, Gisales, and Rattling Gunners. You know, everything a growing warlock engineer needs to run Raw Dog over the world of the Man-Things. But you'll want to find something to do between turns they can run a bit long. Try reading War and Peace, or take up knitting, or write silly internet videos as a desperate ploy for attention. The quest for Ikit Claw's first item takes him into the heart of Lustria to fight the Lizardmen. It makes sense for these quests to be there for the Eye of the Vortex campaign, but for Mortal Empires, they're on the ass end of the world, and it takes characters so long to get there that I forgot that I even sent them in the first place. You know, like a true Skaven. It's also equally possible that Creative Assembly just really hates Lizardmen. The other DLC lord in this pack is called Teeny Weenie after all. Like every great empire, Ikit Claws runs on food and warp fuel. The best source of both is, shockingly, battles. The game is called Total War Warhammer after all. Every other faction on the map, including your own, exists solely to supply you with that sweet sweet green nectar. Afterwards, you'll have a random chance of finding more warp fuel to add to your little lab of horrors. I'll admit that I'm still not exactly clear on what warp fuel really is. Warp stone is the crystallized essence of pure chaos and is used by Skaven for all sorts of things, but the only way you would get it in a liquid form, I mean from a battlefield, would be to round up all the dead bodies and press them in a giant lemon squeeze, or, or maybe a blender, but then you'd need to boil it down into a goopy distillation process that must have incredibly high failure rates because I never seem to find the damn stuff after a battle, and I need it, you know, for rat science purposes. You'll use the fuel in Ikit's Forbidden Workshop, a mechanic that plays the same in both campaigns, and is really the standout feature on the Skaven side of the DLC. You use it to buff already ridiculously overpowered units so they lay down more spray than Peter North in a fireman's outfit. But what really sets Ikit's campaign apart are his Warp Storm Doom Rockets. They're tactical nukes you can fire in battle, an idea the United States toyed with during the Cold War with the Davy Crockett delivery system, because nothing says King of the Wild Frontier like wiping it from existence. You pay for more rockets with food and warp fuel, and you can only stockpile a few at a time. But that's not a problem, as you can only use one per battle, because CA is allergic to fun. Using them is relatively straightforward. You build them, you shoot them, you blow things up. I mean, they first made these things in Tennessee, so it's not exactly rocket science. Well, actually, it is rocket science, but who's splitting atoms? And Ikit's newfound power plays with the Skaven under Empire mechanic. You can attack a city and choose not to raise or loot it, but instead establish a secret Skaven stronghold, in which Ikit can build a top secret Doom Sphere a warpstone bomb that raises any city to the ground. Except that's back asswards. If I wanted to raise a city, I could have clicked that when I took it, instead of having to wait 15 turns and spend 5,000 gold to do the exact same damn thing. Thankfully, CA is staff with mad geniuses, who gave the Under Empire a chance to spread to surrounding cities every turn, so you can secretly establish your own subterranean nation without ever having to scurry out of your starting home. Novel. You have the option to create buildings that give food, growth, and campaign bonuses to movement and recruitment, but each comes with an attached detection increase that raises a bar next to your cove. Push it to the limit, and you're found out. But there's no cutscene or anything, it's just a message that pops up saying that the host nation can spend gold to oust you, and if they do, you'll come back from an intern to find your nest has disappeared. And that's it. I'm not sure what I was expecting to happen here, 
but it was more than that, which left me not expecting much from the Doom Spear detonation either. So when I tried it beneath a dwarf stronghold, well... That is satisfying. The Under Empire isn't exactly a nuanced mechanic, but it's functional in a way my crippling anxiety can only dream of. It leaves you feeling like a furry cancer, waiting to consume the world. As the eponymous Warlock Engineer of the Warlock and the Prophet DLC, it brings much needed units to the Skaven and packs a bevy of ranged and armor piercing units that plug more holes in the Skaven roster than fill Swift with flex tape. For the true Ikit Claw thematic army experience, you'll want to start with three part sport block Gisales. Sniper rats, who whittle down enemy lords from insanely long range with such unerring accuracy they're bound to be nerfed in the next patch. And if for some reason enemy missile troops did find a way past their ridiculousness, the Gisales can depend on the shields they carry to absorb most of that damage too. Couple that with armor-piercing bullets, and longtime Total War players will start getting flashbacks to the other ungodly abomination from the depths of Margaret Thatcher's pleasure drawer, the Mianese Pavis Crossbowmen. Their dark masters may have given them a new name, but the taint of their evil is instantly recognizable here. If by some miracle of mass sacrifice, you do happen to get past the Gisales to the Skaven lines, well, <laughs> Ikit has a multi-barreled surprise waiting for you. Rattling Gunners. Take everything we love about Gatling guns and Fall of the Samurai and bring it to Warhammer. Except for the manual aiming, they didn't bring that, but you know. Yeah. And if there's one thing action movies have taught me, it's that Gatling guns can solve any problem. And with the Rattling Guns suppression mechanic, enemy speed is reduced to a turtle pace and leaves them wide open to the new Doom Flayers. Small, fast, armor-piercing chariots that look straight out of Fury Road Witness me. and are basically buzzsaw motorcycles. I'm honestly not even sure I can legally show them in this video without putting up a Brazzers logo first, because once they get in the back door, they just pound away, and that army is limping home. Because when you're talking about man-sized sewer rats, your mind's always in the gutter. To round out your army, add two warp lightning cannons to the back line, and then fill the rest of your slots with your favorite flavor of meat shield to make it the true Ikit Claw special. With this build, you can down giants, tree men, pointy ears, stunties, scaly boys, and even surrender monkeys, and teach them all the true meaning of shock and awe. Ikit Claw's campaign is the most fun I've had playing Warhammer 2. If I had to rate Ikit Claw as a Skaven Lord, with the top end being the rats that brought the bubonic plague to Europe, and the bottom that weird kid in your class that had a pet rat who always smelled of urine, Ikit Claw would be the explosive rats engineered in World War II to fight the Nazis. You'll spend your entire campaign riddling everything with nuclear bullets, spamming warp lightning, and blowing it all to kingdom come. His campaign is only hampered by some questionably long timers that try to limit how often you smile from ear to ear. I can only assume this is because the British have jacked up teeth and have to keep grins to a minimum, as Ikit Claw elevates mass destruction to an art form so fine, it can only be expressed through Tchaikovsky. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, use your free will as a human and decide how to act on that, because you shouldn't take orders from people on YouTube. Have a nice day.